to do more art. I am so excited. I hope you all are too. My name is Bailey and I'm here to show you all another easy, fun, at-home project. Um, what we'll be doing this month actually is kind of focusing on a broad topic called resist art. And there's so many different kinds and I'm very excited to explore this art with you and um, teach it to you. But what we're going to be focusing on today is something called batik and that is spelled B-A-T-I-K. I highly suggest looking it up because it's a very cool art form. I love it. It kind of reminds me of tie-dye, but it is cloth decorated using a wax resist. Hear that? Wax resist. That's our resist part in there. So typically in resist art, you're going to put something down first that will resist the next layer that you put on top of it. So I feel like this is a good time to show you our supply list. Here it is. You are going to need some copy paper or like printer paper. Um, Thinner paper works best for this project. It sounds kind of weird, but it works really well for it. Um, you can use construction paper as long as it's kind of thin. Cardstock does not work well at all, so the thinner the better. Um, you're gonna need some crayons, some wax crayons. I don't think there's any other kind of crayons, but just make sure that they're wax. Um, you're gonna need a brush because we are also gonna have watered down acrylic paint and um, I'll talk a little bit more about it in the video, but you're gonna want a darker color like a purple or a dark blue, black even will work, um, but for your paint, you're gonna want a darker color, and then some paper towels to blot everything away. So that is our supply list, and oh, let's uh, get some ideas from Leo. For those of you who don't know, this is Leo the Lion, Leonardo da Vinci, but we just call him Leo for short. He is our idea guy. So, for those of you at home, I'm just going to circle around and get some different ideas for you. You do not have to go with these. Some of them are not that exciting. Like this one's candles. It's not that much fun. But if you want, go for it. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Something scary. You can do magic, whatever you want that to be. You can interpret these as your very own. Um, let's see something from outer space oh, take out and let's do another one do, do. balloons we're gonna go with that today so let's get started as always before we get started we need to make sure that we have all of our supplies that you see here i have my piece of copy paper or printer paper i'm doing a smaller size so mine is already cut out um you're gonna need some crayons colors of your choice. Um, you're gonna need a brush for your watered down paint. And um, for this project, you wanna do a darker color for this paint, like a purple that I'm using, or black, or a dark blue, or a red. Um, just like a darker color that you can find. Um, yellow doesn't work as well. You can definitely test with lighter colors such as yellow, but uh, I highly suggest a darker color, um, at least for your first attempt. So, if you've never done resist art before, I'm actually gonna show you all a very simple one that most people have probably done. Um, and normally you would be doing this with watercolors instead of watered down paint, so I will have to blot it, but I'll get to that. Um, so, I've already written out a message that says do more art in a crayon, and um, then that is my resist layer so the wax will actually resist any watered down paint um and it won't look like it at first just because like i said this is um thicker than just watercolors so right now you can kind of see it doing its work where it's not um sticking to that yellow and then i'm gonna blot it with my paper towel just so that you all can really see what i mean when I say it resists it. I'm just gonna swipe it off, honestly. I think it looks cool like that. But you can see how that purple did not stick to the yellow at all, and you can visibly read Do More Art still, and I just think that's so cool. So we're gonna be doing a similar um, activity for this, and it's called Batik. And here is actually an example that I've already done. It gives you these really cool cracked edges, almost like a tie-dye effect. At least that's what I kind of think of it as. Thank you um, to Leo for our idea. We're gonna be drawing some balloons. I'm gonna be sticking to lighter colors just because we are gonna be putting this darker purple and you want 
that dark paint, whatever color you're using, you want it to be able to show on the cracks. So if you have a dark background, it may not show up as well. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna be starting with a yellow balloon and I'll just fill in the page and then I'll catch up with y'all. One thing before you get started, you need to make sure that you press really hard onto your paper. You don't want to do just a light shading, like that's what I normally do, um, but you want to press really hard and make sure that your uh, crayon fills the page. So just press, 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 and then fill it in. So a little extra tip as I'm uh, finishing this up. Um, if you want your, and this is totally optional, but if you want your drawing to stand out a little bit more, um, you can outline it in black crayon, and like I said, that will help it kind of define it whenever uh, we finish the piece. And then you do want to make sure, I haven't done it yet, I'm about to do it. I'm going to fill in my background entirely. I'm going to fill the whole page. And again, pressing, using a lot of pressure, getting that down. All right, so I kind of got some black in there, but that's okay. It'll um, kind of disappear later, so I'm not too worried about that. But I have my entire page mostly covered. I know there's a few white spots, but again, that will be okay. Um, I really hope that you all did not get super attached to this because now here comes the fun part. We are going to, in order to get these um, neat crackles and um, little bumps in there, what we're going to do is crumple it up. Oh, I know that seems so bad, but the outcome is really cool and totally worth it. So I'm going to do this about two to three times because I'll show you what it looks like um, after one time, maybe. Crumpled it up real good here, didn't I? <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. So there are um, a few crinkles in it. I personally would want a little bit more. Um, the more the better, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna keep crumpling it up until I think it looks good. And then I'll show you all the next step. All right, so I think this is pretty crumpled up and I think I'm ready to move on to the next step. Um, we are going to carefully flatten it out. Be sure you don't wanna press it all the way flat because you do want to keep those ridges in there. Um, so there is my piece. And now you're gonna be taking your watered down paint. And um, depending on the paint you're using, I've already gone ahead and mixed it up. Um, depending on the paint you're using, it's gonna take a little bit of experimenting to get the right consistency for it. Um, you do want it kind of liquidy, but you also want it to be dark enough to really pick up the colors um, as it gets brushed over. So, but you're going to take your brush and just simply add it to the page. And I know it kind of looks weird right now, but we're going to try and get in every nook and cranny that there is on this page. And then we will use our paper towels to blot all the paint off and hopefully end up with a really cool piece. Um, don't take your brush and just mash it in there. Just try to carefully work it. If you have to work at it from a different angle, turn your page or adjust your brush. Um, but just be careful because you don't want to damage your brushes at home. But we're going to fill the entire page with the paint. It might take a second, but get everywhere that you want it covered. Basically the whole page, anywhere that you've put your crayon. Okay, I think I've hit every spot or at least every spot that I'd like. And it honestly kind of looks pretty cool just seeing um, already how some of that wax is seeping through the paint and it's resisting, so cool. Um, now we're going to take our paper towels and I'm just, I know on, the, on this one that I showed you all, I just swiped it, but um, I would suggest actually to just blot it and that may take a while, but it will be so worth it in the end. Alrighty, I think that is enough blotting. Um, <laughs> but here is our finished batik. I think it looks so cool seeing all these cracks and ridges in there. That is just so pretty to me. Um, if you are not seeing those cracks or you're not seeing your color pick up enough, like kind of um, my background is 
somewhat see-through, but also the purple has definitely taken over. That is probably because I didn't, and maybe you didn't, press hard enough with your crayon. So if that has happened to you just on the next one that you do, just be sure that you're actually applying enough pressure, um, but you can still see in the balloons, at least, where that, the wax has resisted the paint and um, left their beautiful color behind and still get those really cool cracks in there. Um, but that is Batik. I hope you enjoyed that project and of course the resisting of it. I love it. And there you have it. That was our Batik artwork. Look how cool. I'm so excited. I just love all the cracks and um, little divots and everything. I think that's very cool. But uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I think, is that batik is usually made on cloth, and I think it's kind of cool that once you're finished with this project, the paper almost feels more like cloth than it does paper, and I just think that's a unique element to it. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed that resist project. Oh, that was another thing I forgot. Terribly sorry. Um, where we have all of these cracks and edges that give us that cool batik um, style, that is where the crayon had moved from the paper whenever you crumpled it up and the paint was able to then stick onto the paper rather than the crayon resisting it and it not being able to hold its spot. So that's how we get the really cool style. Um, but yeah, that is Batik. I really hope you all enjoyed that project and I can't wait to show you all even more Resist Art projects next week. So stay tuned.